night's Bach for Truth. I want to um, go over something really quickly, hopefully. And um, I, hopefully you'll understand. I looked up two words, eternal and seen. I have three occurrences in the whole Bible of a combination of eternal and seen. Romans 1.20 says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. That seems like a paradox. He's saying the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. The invisible things are clearly seen. Now, what do you think that means? It's saying you got to see it by faith. And it's saying it's being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead. So that they are without excuse. An example would be when you're born the first time, you're born once and you have what? Life, but you have carnal life. You don't have eternal life. You have carnal life, but you only have to be born once. But if you're born once and Jesus says you must be born again, there must be something wrong with that first birth. And he tells you. That in Adam all die, but in Christ shall all be made alive. So he's saying you got to be born again, not of corrupt seed, but of the incorruptible seed by the word of God. So that's something clear. You wouldn't say, oh, your baby's born. And you don't say, well, this baby's born, but he's not born yet. He's got to be, this baby's got to be born again, according to the flesh. That's why it was silly for Nicodemus to say what he said. He said, can, I, can a man enter again into his mother's womb? He says, well, if your first birth was okay, why would I tell you you need to be born again? No, you got to be born again by the word of God. You got to be born again by the spirit of God. And he tells you, look, what you have now, this is not eternal life. Jesus says, I came to give life and life more abundantly. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And he said, he that liveth and believeth on me shall never, what, die. And hence, if you need to be born again, obviously there's something wrong. Something about you is corrupt. And God's children are not corrupt. They're not of corruptible seed. Meaning, the children of the flesh are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. And it's after you heard and believed the gospel of your salvation, you're sealed with the holy, what, spirit of promise. That that is born of flesh is flesh. That that is born of spirit is spirit. The children of the flesh are not the children of God. So, the Bible explains that. So he's saying, look, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You know that the children that you have, the day that you have them, you, you're happy, but you also know something else about any child of the flesh. They're going to what? Die. Why? Why? But Jesus says, he that believeth liveth and believeth on me shall never die. So he apparently is not talking about what? The corrupt man, the flesh. Hence, born again in Nicodemus, not of corruptible seed. If he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die, apparently, and God is a God of the living and not the dead, God is a God of the incorruptible, not the corrupt, that would mean that the children of the flesh who die because sin when it fulfills itself bring it forth death are not the children of God. So for anyone to say, well, you know, I believe, quote unquote, the Trinity and I believe that Jesus was born of the flesh of Mary. And then they say Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. But they don't want to make a distinction and say, well, wait a minute. There was the man, Jesus Christ, the mediator between God and man. But then there's also Jesus Christ, the first fruits, hence the body of Christ. We are many, but we are one in Christ. And then there's Jesus, who is the Father, who is a spirit, Isaiah 9, 6, everlasting Father, Psalms 89, 26. Thou art my God, my Father, and the rock of my salvation. And so, people are can be confused but the Bible is clearly telling you this but here's the thing and even if you don't believe it just based on that one verse let's go to the next verse 2 Corinthians 4.18 because remember Romans 1.20 says 
for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. He's telling you that the invisible things are clearly seen. But it's not by seeing them by your eyes. He's saying being understood by the things that are made. He's talking about you're seeing by faith. By knowledge. Which is why people preach the gospel. They say you need to come to the knowledge of the what? Truth. Remember, Pilate, what is truth? That's why it says his foolish minds were what? Darkened. That's why it says the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that perish. But to those of us who are saved, it is the power of God and the salvation. It says, if any man be wise in this world, let him become a fool. Because the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. So people see with their eyes, but their eyes deceive them. But it, their eyes shouldn't deceive them because they know that the seed of their flesh dies. But people say, well, but, but still that seed keeps producing, but that seed keeps dying. So if you built a temple based on your flesh and they said, well, let me go back to my quote unquote family roots. You'd say, well, it's funny about that family roots in that tree that you keep planting because that tree keeps dying. So you have this illusion of building a quote unquote family temple, Babylon, up to heaven. But the reality of it is, is your temple keeps going back to the dust. That temple is destructible. That temple is corrupt. That temple dies. Hence, you got to be built on Christ, the chief cornerstone, the foundation. Remember the house built up on the rock? The imperishable seed. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, this matches Romans 1.20, but at the things which are not seen. It's saying we, those of us who have faith, Look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Go back to Romans one twenty. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Listen. For the things which are seen are temporal. How does that work, guys? I want you to really think about this. If the things which are seen are temporal, it's very evident that the man, the mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ, the flesh of Jesus Christ is what? Temporal. temporal. That's why the Bible says in 1 Peter, it says, we must put off this my tabernacle, even as the Lord had showed us. Meaning he was, God was manifest in the flesh, but God is not flesh. The children of the flesh are not the children of God. And he says he's called in Hebrews the father of spirits. It says the children of the flesh cannot please God. Jesus says he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. God is a God of the living and not the dead. So how does that work with the Trinity? It clearly does not work. And the funny thing is people say that the Trinity, they say that of the quote three, they say they're co-eternal. Co-eternal mean each one of their trinity, each of the three quote unquote parts of God. They say, well, those three parts, they're co-eternal. You know, eternal means you never die. That's why Jesus said, he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. I give unto them, unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. So if you have eternal life, that means you never die. You can't die not for one second. He that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. This is what Jesus Christ said. He's talking about now. All those who have believed, who have passed from what? Death to life. So if you don't believe you pass from death to life, then you haven't believed the gospel. But if you believe Christ and you have eternal life, Jesus is telling you, he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Hence, your old man, you must be born again, Nicodemus, is not your new man. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. 
And that's why the Bible says if the spirit of Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. Let the dead bury the dead. But the spirit is life because of what? Righteousness. Can I see that you have eternal life? No. So for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. I see it by faith. I can't physically say who has eternal life? Who does it? So 2 Corinthians 4.18 While we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen. That seems like a paradox. This is the verse pastors just don't read. They don't read 2 Corinthians 4.18 and there's a good reason why they don't read it. And they pretty much avoid Romans 1.20 or skip over it real fast. So 2 Corinthians 4.18 is telling us that we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, because we have faith. We have hope. For the things which are seen are what? Temporal. Temporal means temporary. Temporal means temporary. You want to test this. Temporary are things that are destructible. So if you believe in all the lies, just anything that you can see, God is telling you it's temporary. People can see the flesh of Christ. The man, the mediator between God and man. See, there's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. But then there's Christ, the first fruits, which are spirit, which is us, which is the body of Christ sealed in Christ. And then there's Jesus, who's the father. That art my God, my father and the rock of my salvation. Isaiah 9, 6, everlasting father. Okay. It says, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So how does that work for the Trinity, guys? Remember, these guys are trying to tell you, you have to believe that the flesh of Mary, which came from Adam. Remember, it says he was made to be sin for us. What when he says he was made to be sin for us? What do you think that's talking about? Are you calling God a sinner? It's talking about the flesh. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh. Then in first Peter it says we must put off this my tabernacle, even as the Lord Christ has shown us. So why would why would God put off, quote unquote, his tabernacle if that's God? Why is that being left here? Oh, because God looked upon the earth and all all flesh had corrupted itself before the Lord. You got to be born again, not of corruptible seed, but by the incorruptible word of God, the words that I speak to you, their spirit in their life. You must be born again, Nicodemus. See, what they're trying to do in Trinity is they're trying to tell you that God took something from good, from quote unquote Mary, from man, that man contributed. Man came in with a what? A deficit. Man came in a void of righteousness. Man, what man required was death. Man brought thorns and thistles. Man does not bring the fruit of the spirit. That's why it says God raised him, the man, the mediator between God and man. God raised him from the dead. That's why Jesus says, I have the power. I have the power to lay my life down and to pick it back up. The man, Christ, had the power, which is the spirit. It's the spirit that quickeneth, that giveth life to lay his life down and pick it back up. God is a spirit and those that worship him. God's not worshiping death. God's not worshiping thorns and thistles. God's not worshiping the fact that because we die, that's the deficit. Sin when it fulfills that bringing forth death. See, people are trying to make the, the flesh of man God. That's all Trinity is doing. And God is explaining to you. He says the things which are seen are temporal. And Jesus, and we must put off this tabernacle even as our Lord has shown us. 
And so it says, the things which are not seen are eternal. The things which are not seen are eternal. You go back to Romans 1.20, his eternal power and Godhead. And you got people arguing, dishonestly saying, see what they're trying to do is they're trying to make no distinction between the man, Jesus Christ, and God, Jesus, and Jesus also being called the first fruits, which is plural. Because all those who are born again are born again in Christ. So that's the one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So um, that's what they call the first fruits, which is Christ. And so the other thing that's important is 1 John 1, 2. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness. Right? We look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the invisible things of him, of the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as the eternal power in Godhead. For the life was manifested and we have seen it. And bear witness, it's the spirit that beareth witness, the spirit is truth. And showed unto you that eternal life. How can you saw eternal life? When it says the things that are seen, not seen are eternal. So how did you see eternal life? I want to see, because Jesus is the life. He says, I'm the way, the truth, the life. So you supposedly, he says, Here, this is the will of him that sent me, that all who see the son and believe on him have everlasting life. So did you see eternal life? For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness, right? Bearing witness, you're giving the gospel. And show and shew unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifest unto us. All I'm saying is that when you look at the Bible, when it talks about in, um, the Godhead, and it talks about. 2 Corinthians 14 says the things which are not seen are eternal. There's no way Trinity can be true. The other implication here is that if it's eternal, well, let me see. If God's kingdom is eternal. So how does that work for your end time eschatology based on what people are teaching? When he comes back, is he coming back in an eternal kingdom or is he coming back with a temporal kingdom? Why does the Bible says the kingdom of God come not with observation? How does that match up with Romans 120, which says for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen? How does that match up when he says in 2 Corinthians, he says the things which are not seen are eternal. Well, his kingdom is eternal. And then he has the verse saying, the kingdom of God come not with observation. And he says, unless a man be born again, he can't see or enter the kingdom of God. How does that match your end times eschatology? How does that match the Trinity that tries to make the flesh God? 